Canadians often ask for more choice as to the companies they do business with. Most of us have a relationship with one of three cell phone companies. We usually deal with one of five major banks, and we typically fly across the country on one of two airlines. Today, one of those industries got some more competition as a new airline gets set to take off. It's called New Leaf Travel, and it promises low-priced airfares between Canadian cities like Winnipeg, Saskatoon, Halifax, and Hamilton. They may not be the most popular Canadian destinations, but the company's CEO says that using second-tier airports, some of which are close to major hubs, saves the company a lot of money. Savings that New Leaf says it wants to pass along to you. It's advertising one-way fares starting at $89, and that includes taxes and fees. Like most airlines, it will charge for snacks and refreshments. But unless your bag fits under the seat in front of you, you'll also pay for both checked and carry-on luggage. There may, may be some space in the airline sandbox for New Leaf to play in as well. Air Canada earned more than $430 million in profit last quarter, while WestJet earned $100 million. Both companies were boosted by the lowest fuel prices since the 2008-2009 recession. History, however, may not be on New Leaf's side, as many have tried and failed to challenge the incumbents before. JetsGo was once Canada's third largest airline, but it failed in 2005. Canada 3000 abruptly shut down just weeks after the September the 11th attacks, and efforts to revive it have been unsuccessful. Add to those Greyhound Air, Roots Air, and Canjet. The CBC's Aaron Saltzman was at New Leaf's unveiling in Hamilton and joins me now with more. Aaron, I want to start off with what's new here? A lot of fanfare. What's new? Well, this is really the first attempt to launch a deep discount airline in Canada. And travelers uh, in other countries, Canadian travelers in other countries, will be familiar with some of these. In the U.S., there's Spirit, there's Allegiant. Uh, in Europe, there's Ryanair, there's uh, EasyJet, and my personal favorite, Wizz Air. Um, if you're familiar <laughs> with these uh, airlines, you'll know that they offer deeply discounted fares. New Leaf is going to offer a, a similar type of package. So you'll, on New Leaf, you'll be able to fly from, say, Hamilton to Winnipeg for 99 bucks. But you're going to have to face, uh, so there's going to be some other uh, no frills involved with that. For instance, you'll be paying for your carry-on luggage, the same price you'll pay for a checked bag. Um, there's not going to be any seat back entertainment. You might be crammed in a little bit more, but the prices will be much, much lower a la these other deep discount uh, airlines. And that's really a new, what's new for Canada. The route selection is pretty limited at this point, at least. Did the, does this new offering really pose a challenge to the incumbents like Air Canada and WestJet? Well, that's an interesting question because um, you mentioned the route selection. We're talking about Hamilton, Kelowna, Abbotsford, Regina, Saskatoon, uh, Halifax. Um, if you're flying from, say, Hamilton to Abbotsford, that's not a route that's currently served by either Air Canada or WestJet. So the analysts that I've talked to say, you know, there's not going to be, it's not going to be considered much competition for the two big players. The two big players also get a lot of their revenue from international travel and from business class travel. So uh, at first blush, you know, with these startups, New Leaf is starting with, I think, two planes and only three routes uh, in February. Um, at first blush, they're not going to be great competition or direct competition competition for Air Canada and WestJet, but at the same time, when you're posting advertised fares of, say, $89 mm. between Hamilton and Halifax, other airlines do have to take note of that, and their fares may come down a little bit as well. There's a couple other names launching right about now, too, Enerjet and Jetlines. Why now? Why three now? Well, that's really interesting, and the only good answer I was able to get on that from everybody that I've talked to outside of the three players themselves is that oftentimes what you'll find is um, in a recession, which we have just come out of, or some might say we are still in, um, you will have the opportunity to buy airlines and to buy aircraft and to buy aircraft parts. So it's often actually a good time to launch an aircraft, uh, an airline is coming out of a recession. Um, if you talk to these players um, directly, what they'll say is, look, Canada's underserved by this sort of um, airline. Australia has the same type of population we have, the same scattered population we have, and yet they have two deep discount airlines along with their two major carriers. So if you talk to Enerjet and you talk to Jetlines and you talk to New Leaf, they say at least one maybe two, who knows, maybe three could work in Canada. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Aaron, thanks very much. Okay, you bet. 
So the company has high hopes to take on Air Canada and WestJet, but will they be able to succeed where others have failed? Dean Daco is the chief commercial officer for New Leaf Travel Company. Why on earth do you want to launch an airline? You, you know glutton what? for punishment? Uh, Bruce, it, it's uh, this time. This time in the marketplace, uh, what is happening uh, worldwide, as well as most importantly, what's happening in Canada, makes uh, there's a huge opportunity for us. Uh, you know, the notion is that we're we're not really uh, looking to take on uh, both those uh, those great airlines that you know that we have a lot of respect for. Uh, the notion is is that um, both of them have have, for the most part, ignored or walked away from a huge audience of folks that right now are priced out of the market. That, that a lot of folks would choose to want to travel, to visit family, to visit friends, take a vacation, but when they look at the prices, they're just too high for them to be able to afford it in their budget. Uh, we're going to provide that, that service, that option, that's going to allow them to take advantage of it. And it's a sizable audience that we know we can target. How long can you hold on to low fares like that? I mean, in the first couple of months, easy to do because it's yeah. part of your promotion, but how do you sustain that cost advantage? So uh, that's, that's precisely the answer, is that our ability to, to really initiate and, and control and have established a, a cost model that's significantly lower than our competition. So. Even at offering those low prices, we're actually operating at a at a profit margin. In that's what way? Where do you save money? For WestJet, it was uh, one aircraft. Yeah. Uh, it was tier two uh, airports as you're pursuing, but what else differs about your model? Yeah, so again, we're following those those components uh, that that is going to allow us to save some money, but we're also flying out of the, the second tier airports that, and, and uh, you know, we're going to ignore places in those major hubs like the Pearsons, like the Dorvels and like uh, Vancouver Airport that have substantially higher costs. Uh, we're going to be selling majority of our fares almost exclusively through our own internet booking engine, which avoids the huge cost of distribution. Uh, there's just a whole number different things that are built into our business model that are all about saving costs. Those costs are immediately transferred and, and, and provided as cost savings in lower fares to our guests. You're partnering with a company called Flare Airlines. What do they bring to the table? Yeah, well, they're our service provider. We, we sell the tickets, we provide the fares, we provide the commercial entry point for uh, all those customers to take advantage. And Flare is our partner that's actually going to fly the, fly the airplanes. So um, it, it's just a fabulous partnership. It brings to them a, a brings to them a huge audience of folks that uh, they didn't previously have, uh, previously have access to. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have an amazingly low cost of operation, uh, great aircraft, wonderful staff, and uh, the combination is just, uh, you know, it's going to be something amazing. How do you scale up? You've got these uh, seven centers. I assume you want to be bigger than that, bigger than just Correct. a couple of planes. How do yeah. you do that? Uh, well, we're already looking at how we're going to do it. Our plan is to, to grow from five aircraft today to 15 within three years uh, to fly to many more destinations in Canada that we've already got you know amazing interest and demand uh, right across the country and then into places into the US into the Caribbean and into Mexico over the next uh, you know 24 36 months low fuel prices have been a boon for airlines not just uh, domestically but around the world what happens when they return to levels that that we saw you know five years ago yeah our, our business model doesn't depend on fuel prices being as low as they are it's it's a fabulous uh, opportunity Opportunity for us to take advantage of at the moment, but the reality is that we all, all airlines worldwide, all pay for the same fuel at the same rate, and uh, we all pay for it in U.S. dollars. So our our competitors, as the fuel prices rise for us, they'll rise for them, and we'll compete with them head to head, and we'll take the cost savings that we get from the rest of our operation. You've been in the airline business for a long time. Yeah. You recently ran marketing for Malaysian Airlines Correct. during a very difficult time in that right. company's history. What did you learn there? What did that experience teach you? Uh, well. You know, a much different type of scenario, as you can imagine. Uh, but what I think it really provided us is, uh, you know, operating under stress, taking on uh, and realizing uh, what, uh, you know, the demands of the marketplace, demands of, of, a, of an audience these days that are really primarily uh, in a digital context, the whole social media, uh, people really giving you information, expecting answers in real time and in seconds rather than, than hours or days. And, uh, you know, uh, certainly I was there in the midst of uh, some of the most demanding times you could ever imagine from a communications and marketing perspective and uh, I think well prepared now to sustain uh, what we need to do with New Leaf. I want to come back to your root choice for a second and ask you who your target is because Hamilton to Kelowna is not serving the you know the business person in a way that Toronto Vancouver would. Yeah. So our primary focus is, is not the business traveler. It's the leisure traveler that um, is not needing to get there uh, you know 
today and come back tomorrow. Uh, we're looking for folks that are sort of going on vacation or um, in a much more leisure focus. Uh, they're much more price sensitive than a business traveler who, for the most part, is getting their ticket paid for by their business um, operation. How quick until we see Sun destinations or Vegas, something that would yeah. really be uh, focused on leisure. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, preclude or, or jump ahead of ourselves in terms of making those announcements. But I could tell you that it'll be very, very soon. Interesting. Thanks for your time today. Thank